Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Happy January 2022. Well, depending on when this goes out, it may be like the beginning of February, but probably so. Happy 2022. Today's video is going to be featuring the Walkers, Minnie and Lauren. We did a video together um, some time ago and you guys really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed working with them because they are hilarious and they're just good people in general. So they shared their, you know, their journey and how they waited, how they met, their courtship, details, boundaries, all that good stuff. And so we're back today talking about was it worth the wait, like after the marriage. So without further ado, bring on the Walkers. Hey everybody, I am Lauren Walker. I am Benny Walker, and we are the founders of Grace, Grace to Wait. We've been married for like three years. It seems like it was just yesterday. It does. Jeez. Time mm -hmm. flies when you're married and having fun. A lot of fun. So I am from Rocket City, Huntsville, you Alabama. Yeah, what you did last time, whatever that signal was. What was that? Huntsville, Alabama. I'm from Sweet Home, Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, did I do that? You did. <laughs> okay, so. I am from Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. Woo woo. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, the west side, west side, the best side. So let's get into our questions. Our first question is What were the benefits of waiting before and after marriage? <laughs> that was your question. <laughs> <laughs> so the benefits of waiting uh, before marriage is you take sex off the table okay you actually get to know the individual that you know you're pursuing that you're dating that you want to get engaged and sex is off the table and you don't use it as a distraction and it's not an anomaly to determine whether or not you want to get married to this person so do I like this person do I have a future with this person can I see myself um, not only marrying this person, but can they be a father or a mother to my children? So you don't use sex as a determiner or a distraction to make that decision. Sex can also be something that you can tie yourself to someone, not intently. And so if this isn't the person that you are planning to marry, that's a very dangerous situation that you're going to be in. And we all know what produces from sex. You, there's potential STDs, there's a potential pregnancy. And so if you don't want that to be your final outcome, you put yourself at risk when you do not wait. And this could be someone that you don't see yourself spending the rest of your life with. And so it's really important to protect your body and have enough self-worth that you say, I want to, to make this a boundary and make this a non-negotiable in order to protect my one day marriage. I'm worth it enough. Mm. You're worth it enough. You're worth it enough. To be able to protect that part of you. That's the only thing that you can give that is so valuable to your one day husband is, is your sexuality, that ability to be intimate on that sexual um, measure with that person. So it's so important to protect that when you're dating, when you're engaged leading up to that time when you'll one day be married. And it's amazing to say that I preserved myself all of my entire life for my wife. I preserved myself for my husband. And it's something that you'll be able to tell your children one day, hey, we did this and you can do it too. And this is our legacy. And this is what we're gonna start for our generations. And this is gonna be a generational blessing that we're gonna pass down. So that's one of the benefits of deciding to wait for marriage. What would have been different in your marriage now had you not waited? That's a great question. <laughs> I don't think we would be married if we didn't get if we didn't wait. <laughs> Honestly, okay. I don't think we would have been married if um, we never waited because it it would have really. I know my wife, and I know <laughs> I know that she <laughs> would have been just so distraught and just so convicted. I agree. And okay. she, let me tell y'all this story. So when oh. we were dating, <laughs> so when we were dating and we were friends, we had decided that, you know, we liked each other. And, uh, we wanted to pursue a relationship with each other. And we had just, I think I had just left 
from a gathering at, in college one time when I picked her up. And I was dropping her off in her dorm and we had kissed. This was the first time we ever kissed. The first and only time we ever kissed before we got married. And so I had dropped her off, we kissed. She got back to the dorm room and she was just crying. She was crying. She had told her friends what had happened and she felt so convicted. There must have been some kiss. It was, it was. It was a regular kiss, but it wasn't regular. Trust me, when you kiss. I said. It ain't I, what he didn't know was I told I vowed to God. I said the next person I kiss or explore in that relational manner, um, and we start to go deeper into that, I wanted to be my husband. And so me kissing him, what he didn't know was me kissing him was. Oh my gosh, this, you know, like this is messing up my plans to wait until I'm married to kiss. I didn't want any type of sexual thing to get in the way with me getting to know someone, etc. And so little did I know, this was the person that I was going to marry. Aren't you lucky? I know. <laughs> so it, it worked out, but you know, that was something that I had. I just had, you know, a small conversation with God and when it happened, I was like, Oh no, this is horrible. I feel like the, the, my life was ending, the world was ending. After that, she ended up, um, I mean, she just went ghost on me. She was like, Dude. I think that we should just remain friends. And y'all know when you somebody say we just remain friends, that means that, you know, I'm gonna put you in the friend zone, I'm gonna put you over there, and we're not going to do anything, you know, as relates to relational. Um, but she was like, we should remain friends. And I mean, she just ghosted me. We ain't talking like several months because of that that kiss um, or whatever. And she had took an internship and she left college for like six months. We didn't talk majority of those six months. And I ended up applying to the same internship that she applied to. T. I recruited him. Yeah, she recruited <laughs> me. And we ended up talking and we hadn't talked really in that whole six months. And then that's when they hit back on. And she remember that kiss. <laughs> But that's no. when we hit back <laughs> off and we started to pursue a relationship again. <laughs> and we if, so if we didn't wait it, it wasn't gonna happen. But thank God we did. Amen. Amen. Um I had made a promise very young, um, when I was 14 years old, that I was gonna wait till marriage. So I could wait until marriage. I wouldn't have been married. I mean, simple, I think simple as that. If somebody would have compromised my, or tried to compromise my beliefs and what I had held up to that point, I wouldn't have married them. It's, that's not the person for me. And so because he chose to the same thing, I didn't have to convince him. I didn't even have to have a conversation. We knew, we both knew, because we were best friends for so long, I knew he had that same commitment. He said the same thing to God, that he wanted to wait. And so it wasn't even a conversation that needed to be had. It was a understanding that we had going into dating and then into engagement and then eventually marriage. But let me tell y'all, I didn't always have the mindset to wait, just to be honest and to be real. When I first came to college, I didn't have the decision already made that I was gonna wait for my spouse, but I didn't make the decision until my sophomore year in college. And I had joined a campus ministry organization called RUF. Reform University Fellowship and I joined a church and I was among so many other college students who had decided to wait and I was like I think I can actually do this and I had decided to you know as the Bible said you know live my body as a living sacrifice to the Lord um, because I had just found the Lord developed a relationship with them and started on my journey with them so I wanted to please them with my body and I wanted to find the right person because I got so tired of being with these counterfeits. I asked the Lord one time, I said, Lord, how long am I gonna wait? Like, how long is this thing gonna take? And he said, just trust me. I've got somebody for you. But in the meantime, I want you to help bring other people to this decision to wait. So that leads us into our next question. If someone is waiting, but they slipped up, or they're not waiting and they want to change their relationship, how do they recover from previous patterns? I think it's very easy to make a change. And what forget what everybody else says that it's hard when you have a habit 
when you start a thing, um, it's hard to end a thing. But I, I truly believe that once you commit in your mind and you have all of the right factors around you, it is easy to make a commitment that you will never do something again. And it's the same with committing to refrain from sexual activity until you become married. Um, if somebody is out there and they're saying, I, I've, I've had sex too many times, I've done, I've slipped up too many times, I can't even count anymore. All it takes is one saying, I'm never going to do this again. And how you lead to that, how do you take those steps to that? You have to do multiple things. You have to um, be able to take away everything that is leading you to falling into that temptation and falling into that sin. So if you know that and when someone texts you, it leads to this. You know that when you stay out at a certain time, it leads to this. If you listen to a certain thing, it leads to this. You have to learn and look at what is causing me to continue to do this. And once you find that root cause, it's easy to correct it. Just stop doing it. Simple as that. Bible says that His grace is sufficient. And so it's important to know that the grace of God covers a multitude of sins, which means the grace covers it. He died for the sin that you're talking about, that you're considering. Am I worthy enough to be forgiven for this thing? You are worthy enough to be forgiven for it. So all you have to do is commit that from this day forward, I won't do this again, and I promise you, if you have it in your mind to do it, and you make sure that you take away that root cause thing, the Lord will do the rest. The Bible says that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that regardless of if you had sex before, that you know today's a new day, and you can make the decision today to decide to wait for your spouse um, because. We've all have sinned, but that doesn't always give us the right to continue to sin. But I do believe that um, with a help and with accountability partners, I think that that's going to be very essential to not slip again. Finding a local body, a church or a group of men, a group of women that can help build you up, help you in that decision. Is living together before marriage okay if you're not having sex until you get married? Oh, I want to answer this one first. So living together before you're married is not a sin. So we'll just bunk that right there because people try to make you feel like it's a sin. Shack you know, you Don't shack, shack up. You know, it's not a sin. However, what is a sin is fornication. And you have to know yourself. I know myself enough. I know my now husband enough and probably any other man or woman in a situation like that, you know that when you are put yourself in a situation where you're living with someone, there's a level of intimacy mm -hmm. that comes and sometimes that leads to different things. I would not recommend anybody living with another person that you are pursuing and with hopes to get married mm -hmm. until you are actually married. One, it makes when you get married so special, but two, it protects you from the possibility of something happening. I think it's almost like you you put cheese in front of a mouse trap, of course the mouse is gonna go and be slammed in the trap. Yes, it's it's, it's almost like mouse. setting yourself up for something that can potentially be really bad. Um, so I. Everybody has their boundaries and you may feel like, oh, I'm strong enough to not do something. But until you put yourself in that situation, it's almost like a, it's, it's not good for you to even put yourself there. And why, you know, play marriage? You know, <laughs> living together is like you're playing marriage but not being married. You're not married and you're cooking and you're cleaning and you're doing wife duties and you're doing husband duties and you're not married. You're selling yourself short because you're doing those roles without a ring. You know, you're doing those roles without commitment. And I think that's what makes when you get married so special. We were so excited just to start and blend our lives together. You know, we both, you know, had different stuff, different things that we were bringing into our house. And I remember even our first night together, it was just so much more special because we didn't do it before getting married. So it was mm -hmm. like everything was leading up to that night. And then that night was 
awesome. It was, it was amazing. amazing. <laughs> it really was. And then I'm even after you. that, it's like a life of that because we we went. It was mm -hmm. a first for us to be together, sleep in the bed together, um, move into a house together. I still first. had to get used to it. Yeah. It was like. Well, when you wake up, you know, this but it's, it's so fun. And it's so it's so mm -hmm. awesome. It's so special when you're married mm -hmm. because you know it's. It's covered by God. You know, it's protected by God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You hear often people saying, what if the sex is bad when you get married, then you're stuck with bad sex? What would you say to comments like that? I would say if God ordained a marriage, you have no worries. And you really have to just trust him in that piece. You have to trust God with who he has called you to be with. You have to trust that mm -hmm. if he called you to marry someone, all the other things are going to work out and even if it's a problem initially you're going to work together to improve and be better at the sex mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a it's a process and especially if you're waiting i mean everything is new to you so it's going to be mm -hmm. a process of learning each other learning your lives learning mm -hmm. how to do it etc and so i think that you just really got to trust god mm -hmm. you got to trust that god i know you know i ain't crazy i know you ain't crazy so if you gonna give me somebody it's gonna be good and god i done waited all this time and you're gonna get me this mm -mm. now let me tell you um it may not even be bad it might be amazing you know and you're gonna you're gonna learn together and there are people out there counselors and all that type of stuff that feel like it's gonna be bad it's, i mean there are people that can assist you there. along that as well what i love about you know the journey of waiting and you going into the intimacy after you're married, it's a journey and you're learning each other. And you're learning what each other likes and what each other don't like. And it's all a journey and you're gonna be on that journey forever. If it's bad, the Lord will help you make it good. <laughs> you guys have another Grace to Wait challenge this year. How about you tell us about that? Grace to Wait challenge 2022 is here. Yes. We are so excited. If you feel like this is your time to make a commitment to the Lord to refrain from sexual activity until marriage, we need you to sign up to the Grace to Wait Challenge. If you win, first prize. First place. First place. If you win, you're going to get, drum roll please, $200 to do whatever you want to do with it. Anything. Check yourself out on a date. Go get you an expensive meal or steak. And guess what? We have giveaways. Yes, yes, yes. I always say if it's free, it's, it's for me. me. This Grace to Weight Challenge is not just for women. It's not. This Grace to Weight Challenge is for men as Especially well. Especially men. Especially men. <laughs> because let me tell you. The men is just as important as the women. Absolutely. And so, yes, join the Grace to Weight Challenge today. You can go to gracetoweight.com to get more information, or you can go to Grace to Weight Instagram or Grace to Weight Facebook uh, to look for the instructions and to join the challenge. We're gonna be waiting for you all to join, and we're so excited. And the challenge ends on February 14th, Valentine's Day. So make sure that you go and do all of the instructions in the post. Go to our Instagram, go to our Facebook, and sign up for the Grace to Wait Challenge today. Yes, you can do it. But we're going to be there with you. You have the Grace to Wait. Yes. If you don't, we're going to make sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. We're praying for you. You who are out there who are going to make the decision, know that we are praying for you and that we are, you know, we're rooting for you in this decision. Take care. You have the grace to wait. You, you have, have the grace to wait. wait. You, you have, have the grace to wait. wait. You have the you grace to wait. You can hold out. You have the grace to wait. You can hold out. <laughs> you Don't give up. You have the grace to wait. Keep on pushing through. Because you have the As Medea said, clink, clink, lock down. Don't let him in. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>